Welcome back my dear friends and dear students, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you and this is the DADM which is data analysis and decision making uh, course under NPTEL MOOC. This is the DADM 1 course under MOOC and we are in the 52nd lecture which is we have just um, started the second lecture for the 11th week and we have another one week to go before we wrap up with the course. As you know this is a 12 week course, total number of hours is uh, 30, total number of lectures is 60 because each lecture being for a half an hour and each week we have 5 lectures and this is um, half an hour each and my name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. So we were discussing about loss functions and I main, mentioned that for loss functions initially they are quadratic, why quadratic we consider that they have a one to one simile with respect to trying to minimize the variance. And if uh, the theta value is an unbiased estimation for t, t is the estimate which you get from the sample, then finding on the difference squaring it up and finding on the expected value of that would give me the loss which is the variance trying to minimize the variance obviously is the best way we can achieve. Then we consider that we have the linear uh, loss function where you give if you give equal penalties to t minus theta or t minus theta on the negative side uh, or theta minus t whichever way you denote and if k1, k2 which are the weights are equal which is equal to 1. So, it is a 45 degrees line in the first quadrant and the second quadrant and in case if k1, k1 is more than k2 or k2 is more than k1, we will give weightages accordingly that means overestimation is more penalized or underestimation is more penalized. And then later on we also discussed through the diagrams obviously uh, that uh, even in case if k1, k2 are functional forms of theta also which means for higher values of theta or lower values of theta your overall weightages for the loss function may change rapidly. That means higher the values are more the weights are that means k1 keeps increasing. Maybe this increase can be linear, maybe this in increase can be non-linear. Over and above the loss functions concept which you are also discussing. And then if underestimation is more penalized or less penalized, the values of k would also ch change accordingly. But consider k, I am using just a, a symbol. So, k by itself is basically a functional form of weights for the thetas or the domain in which we are trying to basically find out the theta. Then later on, we I, I, in the last few minutes of the uh, 50th lecture, I did not mention that if what if the loss function is of the form, it is basically the probability, probability uh, or the difference between t minus theta and it has a one to one co correspondence with the concept of interval estimation. And this difference being will be equal loss function will be equal to 1 if t minus theta is, is greater or less than equal to epsilon. So, that greater than or less can be modeled accordingly and in case it will be otherwise it will be 0. So, here uh, we are considering the mod, mod means equally pen, uh, distance from the mean value on to the right or the left and they give us very good results corresponding to the fact that we want to find out something to with these loss functions and the interval estimation problems. So, uh, 52nd lecture is about the loss functions. Now, Zellner, Arnold Zellner in 1984 proposed the balance loss function. So, balance loss function is more to do with the regression or multiple linear regression concept. So, when we are doing the multiple linear regression, I always emphasized and I have been talking that you find out the difference of the of the um, square of the difference for the which is basically the errors, square them up and then differentiate with respect to parameters, put those, those values into 0, find out the parameters in a hat form which is the estimated form and complete the set of other tests which you want to do and but the main part is over for the starting that. Now, in case of the multiple linear regression what we considered is that these values of the differences which we take for t minus theta or, or here theta can be say for example, beta is theta and beta hat is t or it can be say for example, uh, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are the corresponding values of theta 1, theta 2, three, theta 3 considering the vector in that case t 1, t 2, t 3 would be the corresponding uh, estimated values for theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. 
Now, in Arnon Zender proposed that what about trying to basically give uh, weightages for the loss function based on two important aspects. One is basically the estimated value which you find out and based on the estimated values of which you found out which is for alpha and beta, then you find out y hat which is basically the best forecasted value of y. What if if we give weights to those um, the difference of the area errors corresponding to y hat and y that means you are going two step first trying to basically find out the um, parameters values using the estimated values then try to basically give weight some weightages to the loss function corresponding to theta and n and then utilizing some other concept of loss function corresponding to y and y hat now, in case if the, the corresponding loss function with respect to um, uh, theta and n is basically quadratic, so obviously it would be quadratic loss function. And in other case, again, if it is quadratic, in order to um, the find out the differences or find out the di errors of the differences between y, which is the actual value, and the predicted value is y hat, then we will basically have the balance loss function. This is what we are going to talk discuss about. The balance loss function reflects both good, goodness of fit which is the lack of bias and the precision of estimation. So, there are two steps, one is the precision of estimation, how precise your estimation is, uh, is and then how good your model basically fits in order to compare the estimated value which is y hat with respect to the actual value which is y. So, y and y hat can be scalar and y and y hat can be vector also depending on that you have different values to predict utilizing the values of x1, x2, x3, xp. A balance loss function as proposed by Zellner would basically have two parts. So, one is basically the air, the weightages which you have which is w for the first part and 1 minus w for the second part. So, what is basically the, the first part? So, if you let me highlight it. So, this if I consider is basically the goodness of fit which I am considering. So, how good or bad the um, uh, fit is. So, here you basically have g theta which is the functional form of theta which can be say for example, y also which is the actual value and g um, a functional form of, of t would basically the y hat which you want to find out. So, here what you are trying to find out is the difference between y and y hat as an example I am giving squaring them up putting some weights which is w. So, this is basically the goodness of it. Let me highlight it with a yellow color. Now, let me come to the precision estimation. This is the estimation which you want to find out. Let me change in the color. So, in this case, the precision of estimation was basically again a squared uh, concept which is basically the difference between theta and t uh, or in, in multiple linear regression it will be basically the difference of alpha and alpha hat or beta and beta hat whatever it is based on the either the univariate case if it is a simple linear regression or the multiple linear regression whatever it is. And this is basically the precision of estimation where you give a weightage is a 1 minus w. Now, it should be remembered that um, from Arnold Zena proposed the balance loss function such that the weights basically add up to 1 because you depending on the penalty which you want to put both for precision of estimation as well as for the goodness of it you will give weights accordingly. The first term basically represents the goodness of it as I mentioned where the second term represents the precision estimation how good or bad your, uh, your estimation is. So, which is also termed as the accuracy. So, the in, in case um, uh, what can be done, so now I will again create a blank slide and explain few things. So, first term I am again coming back to my lecture. The first term represents the goodness of it while the second term represents the precision of estimation which is also terms of the accuracy. The second term as originally used by Zellner consists of um, in it its quadratic form or the squared error sort of form which is there which means what did Arnon Zellner consider would be like this. So, your balance loss function I will consider is suffix B L F loss function which is balance loss. I will give weights W and here I am considering that the uh, precision of estimation and the goodness of fit. Goodness of fit is basically with respect to y and y hat. So, I will put y minus y hat it squared. So, because that was uh, g theta minus g t 
transpose into g theta minus g t values that that is why it is basically square plus 1 minus w I am giving the weights to the precision of estimation precision estimation would be say for, I am considering a very simple uh, concept I am considering there is say for example only one theta you want to man, find out which is the simple linear regression. So, that case it will basically be b uh, minus b hat. So, this would basically be the precision of estimation, this would basically be the goodness of fit and and uh, the um, the loss function balance loss function can be made accordingly. So, say for example, if you remember I considered what are the very simple loss functions I considered, I considered the linear loss function, the weighted uh, linear loss function, uh, the 0 1 loss functions. So, the problems can be um, structured, I will use another different color. See for example, the balance loss function can be say for example, I will consider y minus y hat without the square which is basically linear function plus 1 minus w by beta minus beta hat whole square. So, in this case this is quadratic and this is not quadratic. So, this is basically linear or it can be reversed also that means the linear part goes through for the second part precision or estimation and the square part comes into the, the goodness of it or else it can be like let me use another the balance loss function can be if you consider the 0 1 loss function. So, it will be probability of the difference y minus y hat being less than equal to epsilon. So, this can be 0 and 1 plus 1 minus R, uh, w or omega whatever it is. So, this is beta minus beta hat this is square and based on that you proceed. So, again here the precision or estimation is quadratic while the goodness of it is basically the 0 1 loss function it can be again changed like uh, the 0 1 loss function goes to the precision of estimation and the quadratic part comes into the, the goodness of it. So, there can be different variants of the loss function, but obviously there has to be some theoretical niceties in what you have to want to achieve and the practicality of the problem. So, this is uh, this was the blank slide I kept it purposefully. Okay. Now, let us uh, continue the discussion. So, the uh, the least square estimation uh, reflects the goodness of fit considerations whereas, the use of quadratic loss function involves a sole emphasis on the precision estimation. So, that will depend on the type of problems which you have. So, depending on the problem these terms can be modified into linear linear loss function as I mentioned it can basically be the mod loss function, it can be quadrillion loss, loss function, it can be any sorts of loss function in both for the goodness, goodness of it and the precision of estimation. Now, Hall variant in the nine, a year 1975 we used this loss function which is known as the Linux loss function which is linear exponential loss function. So, Linux what the word Linux which is coming is for the part it is linear or oh, I should use the highlighter my apologies. So, this is Linux. So, so this is the L i n e e x Linux loss function. So, oh, sorry this double e would not come. I will use this also. Is that is the Linux loss function. Now, in the Linux function, as the words mentions, it there are two parts, which is the linear part and the exponential part. And Hall variant, you first employs employed such a loss function in the real estate as, as assessment in order to basically find out the prices and the populations and so on and so forth. 
but later on the work was left to Hall to Arnold Zener also again who basically found out all the statistical properties of that. So, now here comes basically the actual description. The fact that overestimation and underestimation of theta which is the parameter of the population may be of unequal consequences, unequal importance, higher means more penalty, lower means less penalty or it may be mean that lower being more penalty, higher being uh, less penalty. What, what I mean by high and low is basically the difference of, of the estimated value and the actual value which is T n or T minus theta. Theta is basically the parameter value and T or T suffix n is basically the estimated value for theta. The fact that overestimation and underestimation of theta may be of unequal consequences has not been properly or adequately emphasized in any of the above loss functions. So, based on that we will try to basically proceed and learn something about the Linux loss function. So, as I was discussing after Hall Varian, the this work was taken up with Arnon Zener and he proposed the loss function. A loss function which takes case of this is the linear exponential loss function, the Linus loss function which is Zener 1986, which is given by the as asymmetric convex loss function and it is of this form. So, here, here L delta, well delta is basically the difference between T minus theta or theta minus T in whichever you try to basically portray. So, they would basically be the before I discuss the loss function they would be two um, parameters one is basically a which is the shape parameter and theta and b is basically the scale parameter depending on the shape and scale how it can be changed. Now, the loss function basically consists of the linear part which is here and the exponential part which is here. So, hence it is known as a linear exponential loss function. Now, uh, notice very interesting thing, if the difference between T and theta is very small, that means you are trying to basically estimate uh, or find out the loss uh, corresponding to very precision of estimation, very precise. Precision of estimation I am not talking from the view, view point of balanced loss function, is very precise, very nearby. Then look at the exponential term, expand it. So, if you expand it, if you know the, the, the expansion of e to the power x is basically 1 plus x divided by 1 factorial plus x squared by 2 factorial and it continues. So, if you basically expand it e to the power a th t minus theta, the first term would be 1, 1, 1 cancels here. Then the second term here is basically plus a t minus theta. So, so, that term and, and this second term which is which I am highlighting now also cancels. And if you consider the squared error term that means, the third, uh, third term which is squared error term is only important and other terms becomes very less because when I mentioned that the difference between the estimated value and the actual value t n minus theta is very small hence the cube root, fourth part root, fifth part root can all be ignored. So, what we are left is basically the, the quadratic form. So, hence if you see that the linear exponential loss function for very precise estimation can be converted into a squared error loss depending on the practicality of the problem. So, here the as per the Zellner I am just reading it that functional form basically consider b is not there, it does not make would not make much a sense because b being um, uh, a parameter which serves to scale the loss function depending on how you are trying to tackle the problem. So, again there is the I will again repeat there is a linear part, there is an exponential part and we saw that the um, Linux loss function can be converted into a uh, quadrated loss function depending on the efficiency or the precision of estimation considering that the third power onwards which means that uh, cubic power and onwards uh, would basically be ignored. When A is greater, so obviously here is where, where the asymmetricity will come for the loss function and it will become be, be very clear to all of us. So, if A is positive large number then in that case exponential part would uh, would be dominating the linear part for the right hand side of the, the values of the difference between uh, t and, and theta such that delta is positive. Because if delta is positive, so obviously and a is also positive then the linear the exponential part will dominate the linear part. 
Hence, here overestimation would be more of a problem, more, more of a concern. And in this case, in, in the case which you are talking about, if A is positive, obviously in the negative zone where t minus theta is negative, obviously that exponential part would not be dominating the linear part, hence it will be more or less linear in nature in the second quadrant. I will come to the graphs later on, please wait. But in the other case, if we consider say for example, the values of um, uh, this A is negative. So, if A is negative and again you are considering T n minus theta as positive, so obviously the exponential part would not be dominated by the linear part and the linear part and the and exponential part when combined together in, in that case. So, call for our understanding will say then that the overestimation is less penalized, but if I consider in the underestimation in this case, they are, we have already have the difference between T n minus theta as um, uh, negative, A is also negative. So, negative negative would make it positive, hence you have a exponential part which would be increasing exponentially in the, in the second quadrant that means for underestimation. So, hence for A values as positive overestimation is more penalized, for A values as negative um, uh, underestimation is more penalized. So, obviously you will be asking that what are the different type of examples which we have, I will come, um, come to that later on. When A is uh, greater than 0, the convex loss increases almost linearly for negative uh, errors which is theta delta which is t minus theta and almost exponentially for the positive errors which is t minus theta. Therefore, overestimation is a more serious consequence than underestimation as I just mentioned. When A is negative less than 0, the linear exponential uh, increase and decrease they are swept uh, within each other, they are interchange whereby the underestimation becomes more serious than overestimation. So, obviously, you will basically formulate your problems accordingly. So, this is the loss function which is basically looks like this. I think um, I should draw it to it. So, it will look like if overestimation is more penalized and use a different color, overestimation is more penalized then. So, this would be more, this would be less. And in case if it is underestimation is more penalized, so this will be the loss function. So, obviously, in this case A is less than 0, in this case A is greater than 0, based on that you will try to do the calculation. So, here if you see A greater than 0, overestimation more penalized and underestimation less penalized. Here if you see for A values less than negative, underestimation is more penalized and overestimation is less penalized. So, and obviously this one should remember delta value is basically T minus theta and the loss function is also modeled accordingly. So, let us consider um, uh, simple three examples. Consider a company plans to launch a new product, say a refrigerator in the market and it is in the consumer market based on this which you want to proceed and also suppose the similar products from different manufacturing companies already exist in the market. So, obviously, when the company wants to float the problem, let me tell you the background. So, obviously, there would be warranty life. So, warranty life means that if the product fails before the warranty life, you are liable to change and replace the product as per the norms of the, of the company. And in case if it fails after the warranty life, obviously the person will basically make the payments and change the product accordingly. Now, the issue is that if it is a new product and there are such other products, uh, good competitors in the market who are also new. Um, and you want to basically go for a warranty life which will basically give you the best possible action. That means, maximum the products would not fail during the warranty time within and it will start failing after the warranty time. So, people would be, would be making the contracts accordingly. Now, consider the warranty life is say for example, 6 months arbitrarily consider. And in, in, in case 1 and case 2, in case 1 you give a warranty life of uh, 8 months and in case 2 you give a warranty life of uh, 4 months. 
Now, if I, if I consider 8 months is 2 plus 2 more than 6 and uh, 4 months warranty is minus 2 with respect to 6 months which is the actual warranty. Now, if your actual penalty is quadratic, so in that case 8 minus 6 which is plus 2 whole square and 4 minus 6 which is minus 2 whole square would give you a penalty which is quadratic which is squared error loss and obviously, the penalties both for positive and negative would be of equal amplitude which is fine for our calculations, but we are not taking practicality into consideration. Consider the product basically which you are going to sell, if you give up a warranty which is higher. So, what will happen is that in the initial period people will be more willing to buy your products because your products warranty life is much higher than the rival products. But consider on the other hand, maximum of the, P of the products say for example, in case if the warranty life is actually not 8, it is less than 8 and basically products start failing which means that even if initially people brought your product in uh, bought your product in large numbers, but the failure rate has increased that means you have to basically replace them or pay the penalty by, by either uh, uh, buying those products again back to them or basically replacing those expensive parts whatever it is. So, initial profit or revenue has basically been offset by the case that you have not been able to predict the warranty life as it should have been which is basically in and around 6, but you gave a estimated value of 8. So, uh, so there the losses would be different and they would not be quadratic, they would be unequally penalized. Now, consider the other case where if your warranty life actually should be 6, but you gave 4 which means that people would be more willing to buy your, pro, uh, buy your rival products, you will lose a huge amount of market in the initial uh, set. But obviously, it may happen that if the, pro, uh, the products actually are nearer to the actual value which you should have been predicted. So, obviously, later on you will slowly gain some of the market share that means again it is unequally penalized. Now, consider this I um, will read this slide and then again give an another example. So, consider a company plans to launch a new product say, say, say a refrigerator in the, in the consumer market also suppose the similar products exist from different manufacturers which are already exist in the mar market. So, this is the background which I already mentioned I am going to read it again. Consider then the company is expected to give such a warranty for the particular product that is the refrigerator to its customers in order to sell the product in the market which is fine, they should give warranty. Now, if the value of this warranty is more than the average time of failure for the product, then the aforesaid, aforesaid mentioned company needs to replace the damaged product itself or face basically litigation action by the customers. On the other hand, if the warranty period is less than the average failure of the similar products in the market, then the company loses the market share to its rivals as naturally the customers are, are willing to buy the refrigerator from the competitors who assume a higher warranty life. So, as I said that uh, if your warranty life is less than the average type, then the companies would lease the initial market share. So, all of them will go to the rival party or the other uh, manufacturers. But even if they if they are willing to come back later on and to buy your products, but this amount of offsetting um, uh, would definitely not be possible in order to take care of your loss. So, what values of A or, or whether it is positive or negative we, you would give for this example will depend on what your over um, estimation and underestimation problems would be with respect to the uh, estimation problems which you basically would have done. So, this is a refrigeration problem we will see later on it can be an electrical problem, it can be a civil engineering problem and based on that we will study that how loss functions can be utilized. So, with this I will end this um, 50 second class and in the 50 second class I just considered the Linux loss a simple example of the refrigerator and continue two more examples in the as I said in the electrical engineering the civil engineering case in the 53rd class and continue more discussion about the multivariate statistical models and other methods. Thank you very much and have a nice day.